Darren. All right, I'm super excited. My name is Doris Frencha. I am a co-host host of the Fort Worth HR Professional Emphasis Group. If no one knew what PEG meant, Professional Emphasis Group, where we are emphasizing benefits and compensation for HR professionals. Um, I'm super excited to co-host this with my amazing co-host, Susan. You want to introduce yourself? Sure, oh, wait, I, I forgot guess. to say one thing. What I what I started doing in 2023 was giving myself more grace. I am an overachiever, a type a type personality, yes. and just like everything's got to be perfect. And I wanted to be great, but I realized there was a lot of unnecessary stress and pressure and overthinking. And since I started giving myself more grace and not pursuing perfection. Things just seem to flow better. I don't know. You know, it's just it just works better and easier. I'm not cursing people out as much as I used to. <laughs> and I'm still I'm happy with my achievements, but I don't beat myself up on them. Um, if I don't make something, then I celebrate more of what I am accomplishing. Okay. Sorry, Susan. I cannot imagine you cursing somebody out. Like I can't even. I can't even imagine it. Um, oh, hello, everyone. I'm Susan Snipes. I am the owner and principal consultant of Employee HR Pro, and I'm a Fort Worth HR member. Um, and I am going to be getting my SHRM certification this year. I had it, and I just sort of let it lapse. I've been maintaining my GPHR and my SPHR, but I did not do anything on the the sherm side so i just kind of need to refresh get another one going on that um i think one thing that worked really well was me identifying things proactively that i saw were going to be really painful and unpleasant for other people and volunteering to do those things so they didn't have to and i continue wow. to do this because my fuel is adding value and letting you make the most and highest use of your time. There you go. Awesome. I love it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I am going to introduce our speaker today, Joe Lee Rich, owner of Rich Results. I only, I don't only know her through this professional capacity, but we have spoken on stage before about attracting and retaining talent. She's the recruiting expert. I'm not. That's why I said she's got to come and talk about compensation strategies for 2024. We are both graduates of the Goldman Sachs 10KSB program. We both woman owned business, you know, yay. And she is just a pleasure to know personally and professionally. And I know that she is about to bring it. So Jolene, I have get, made you co-host. You can tell us your 2024, what you're going to continue doing in 2024. And then this floor is yours. You can share and do whatever you like. For everyone else, I love your beautiful faces. But since we're recording this, and so we can try to cut down on lag, if you can turn off your video, I'm going to turn mine off too. And then Please be active and interactive in the chat. And um, Susan and I, or I, will um, be sure, Jolene, to um, bring to your attention when there is a question in the chat. Okay, I'm out of the way for real now. Jolene, this floor is yours. Okay, where did you go? We can't hear you, love. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. I don't there you, you would think I just started using Zoom yesterday. <laughs> I always forget <laughs> about that part. Um, it, I'm Jolene Rich. My company is Rich Results. What am I going to keep doing? Um, well, I actually, Therese, really love what you said about being kind to yourself. I think that's really, really important. Um, sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and, and that doesn't help at all. Um, but another thing I want to continue doing is um, I was a little bit better at about regular exercise last year, and I am going to continue that. You've all heard it here. 
Uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> you've all heard it here, so you can keep me accountable. Okay. So just a little bit about rich results. So there are a lot of HR experts on the on this call. I am not an HR expert. I um, our team focuses on just one area of HR. The one area of HR that we focus on is recruiting. Um, so in terms of my background, I started off in consulting. I was in the people and performance group at EY um, in their consulting group. And um, I've, after about seven, eight years, um, I started some doing some consulting on my own and that led to recruiting. Um, in terms of our company, we work on a number of different kinds of positions. We work in a number of different kinds of uh, industries. One thing that we truly believe in is that every search should be unique to the company because every organization is unique um, in terms of their culture, in terms of their value. Um, and that's something we truly believe in. Uh, we have a 100% fill rate. We're really uh, thrilled with that. And our average fill time is about 58 days. And we received an email a few weeks ago that in 2023, we were a top 25% LinkedIn firm. Don't really know what that means, but it said we send out a lot of messages, which is true. Um, and we, our response rate was over 25%. So we were kind of excited about that. It's a little bit about, about us. So um, I'm going to um, just in terms of time, I'm I'm going to go through some of this pretty quickly. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you want to brainstorm, if you want to run through some scenarios, anything like that. I love doing that, um, but going to run through this kind of quickly because we don't have a lot of time and I want to leave time at the end for more people to introduce themselves. So we're going to talk about compensation from my perspective as a key to hiring and retention. So we're gonna take a, a little bit of a, a, a walk down memory lane and talk about the impact of COVID on compensation. We're gonna talk about some strategies to help with hiring and retention, which in a lot of ways came out of the challenges of COVID. We're gonna talk about pay transparency and equity issues, um, which I know you probably easily know um, honestly, probably a lot more than I do on, on this because you're having to keep up with it from a legal perspective. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about 2024, what to expect, um, which you're probably getting all sorts of different information. And um, hopefully I can make it less muddy for you. So if you remember, uh, like I'll take you back to 2020, even though it might bring back some pretty bad memories, but you know, there was a lot of variation across industries, um, obviously in the healthcare se uh, sector. And I noticed there's several people in healthcare on the call. And, you know, if you remember frontline workers faced more demand, um, a lot of challenges. And from a compensation perspective, this led to overtime, hazard pay. And then we had the retail and hospitality industries layoffs, furloughs, um, although supermarkets um, kind of was an outlier there um, because supermarkets needed to often offer hazard pay. Um, and then you had tech and IT and those industries, there was a surge in demand for digital services. So, you know, bottom line is that the pandemic got us to think differently about work-life balance we valued flexibility. We started to work remote. Employees, when possible, wanted to work remote. Employers are still struggling with um, how many days can I bring people back? Should, I want everyone here all the time. They don't want to come back all the time. That's still out there. Um, and to keep key players, companies started to give bonuses, especially for those really braving, you know, the, the on-site or, or risky, risky spots. Um, I mean, COVID mixed things up, right? Pay was, you know, there were variations across different industries. No question about it. I think COVID made us think differently about work-life balance, right? We realized 
we care about our families. We care about spending time with our family and friends. Sometimes we needed to take the time to take care of our families and friends. And, you know, businesses needed to res respond to that. Um, so, you know, there were compensation strategies that came out of this. Um, so the most interesting time probably in my career in recruiting was the great resignation, um, which kicked off in early 2021. This caught everyone by surprise. I mean, all over the news, I don't know if you know this, but it was actually an a and professor that coined the phrase, the great resignation. I thought that was kind of cool. And it was in a quote in, I think the New York Times or Wall Street Journal. So that was really cool. Um, but what we saw during that time was an unusual increase in the number of employees voluntarily leaving their jobs as they started to rethink what was important to them, right? Work-life balance, happiness, their goals. And it really shook up the job market in a big way. In fact, I would say the conversations that we had with our clients focused a lot more on retention than recruiting. Um, because we were loving, I mean, we're always happy to do recruiting, but we wanted to make sure that our clients had in place what was needed to then keep the talent um, for long term. During this time, we especially doubled down on benchmarking and market analysis. Um, I think this is super important. We happen to use an organization called Labor IQ. Um, they are basically in Labor IQ, and, and you can look it up. Um, it allows us to look up what is going on in the market in terms of salaries. And by the way, if anyone here wants to um, understand a little bit more about that, let me know and I can point you in the right direction. But for our clients, we were needing to run salary reports and we would show them, okay, here's the difference in geographic area. Here are the difference in terms of education and what's going on with comp. And there were so many differences and it was really important for us to show our clients, okay, this is what's going on in the market. Dallas is different than New York. Uh, uh, um, Florida is different than Nebraska. Like these are the changes that are going on. And we wanted to show them because in some ways it was hard to believe what kind of changes were taking place so soon after COVID. Um, I would say also the, the leaning into total rewards and non-monetary benefits. Benefits are always important. I mean, it's it's super important to make sure that we are taking care of our employees. And there is no better person that it, um, can give us more information in that area than Doris, um, plug, plug for my friend. Um, but it, it was also not, but, and it was important for companies to look at, at benefits and, um, and rewards kind of in a more holistic way, right? So beyond salaries, okay? And when our recruiters would get on the phone with talent, there were certain things that they would hear over and over and over, right? They were hearing, well, honestly, probably the top three things that our recruiters started to hear on a regular basis, and honestly, it has not changed much, was number one, fair compensation. So it was up to us as an employer to know what does that mean in our market, um, and then number two, we heard often how important it was for professionals um, at almost any level, the development, personal and professional development was important. So when we talk to potential candidates about what kind of development they can expect at an organization, that was music to their ears. And then finally, the flexibility, which honestly means something different to everybody. And flexibility means something different in different industries. And so it was important for us to ask, okay, what does that mean for you, right? Um, I think companies, I think companies always knew um, how expensive it was to replace people. But I think it became very apparent during this time, 2021, 2022. And there is no question about it. A lot of organizations have really, really learned 
a lot about um, what is the cost of an employee and what is the what is what can I how can I benefit as an employer out of an engaged employee, right? You know, losing an employee is, you know, more than okay, I need to go hire a different person. We're having to think about the lost knowledge. How much does it cost to train a new person? Um, you know, the I mean, there's a lot of different statistics depending on the position, how much it is to replace an employee. But we often suggested to our clients, okay, if you see that people are leaving, let's look at compensation and make sure, both for monetary and non-monetary, make sure that what we're offering makes sense and because we need to keep people. The bottom line is that for this to work, leaders needed to be flexible. You know, if, if all you see is, this is the salary um, and this is what it's going to cost to hire somebody. If you want to fill a job and you're 20% lower than the market, it's important for employers to figure out, okay, how are we going to bridge the gap? We work with a lot of small mid-market companies and it was really important important for us to explain, okay, if you're 20% less than what we're seeing here or 10% less or whatever it is, what is going to attract them to your organization? Um, hey, Jolene, can I, yes. I, I have a question personally. Thank yes, you so much. This is awesome. So if um, that labor IQ resource yes. you were talking about, is that, yes. that is what the employers, our leaders can use to see where they are in the market as far as 20% yeah. less or maybe- Or wherever it is. So are. Labor IQ is, is, you know, you run salary reports in Labor IQ and the data from Labor IQ comes from, you know, millions and millions and millions of pay stubs, right? And it's updated right. actually on a, on a monthly basis. And so when- you know, it's funny because I was showing this presentation to someone on my team and she's like, oh, you should have had a picture of one of the reports because, and it's true, I should have, um, maybe I can send one out a sample because what's really interesting is you see in these reports, okay, here is what's going on in your market, you know, so right. Dallas at a company of this size at a, at a you know, this is a, a the position needs this much education, et cetera, et cetera. You put mm. in all the data and it's going to show you where you should be based on the supply. So what we're noticing because unemployment is, is, is historically pretty low right now, right? Below 4%. We're mm -hmm. probably at, I don't know, 3.6, 3.7%. Um, what we're seeing is, you know, if there's not a lot of people available right? You're going to have to be at least at the median or further up to be able to attract people. Wow. That's huge. And yeah, is that it's a, it's a great resource. Um, typically you would find it in HR departments, compensation groups would have it. Um, uh, but I also um, would definitely say that, uh, you know, and you know, there's a number of HR consultants on the line. Susan, you might also do this. Um, but bringing in someone who really understands compensation, I, again, mm -hmm. I'm not an expert in compensation. I'm an expert in recruiting and what it takes right. to bring in the right talent. Okay. So, Is that laboriq.com? Yeah, laboriq. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I have a question. Jennifer has a question. What size company would you suggest use Labor IQ? Uh, I mean, we pull reports for our clients and honestly, um, we pull reports, um, you know, basically for any size company. And like I said, we work with a smaller, a small mid-market company. I think it makes sense. There's actually, um, next Tuesday, Labor IQ is having a, um, Doris, I'm going to send you, um, something they're having a webinar and oh, actually, so, okay. yeah. Um, so the chief economist at Labor IQ, um, who we helped to bring in, I'm very proud of that, <laughs> Mallory. She gave us some of this information that I'm going to be talking about in just a minute. Um, okay. and 
Mallory is doing a webinar. I believe it's next Tuesday. I'm going to send you that information. I, I Perfect. Think that, yeah, I think you guys will find it incredibly interesting. Thanks, since you. It's, since it's an AI, uh, since the data is gen AI generated, is it, you know, is it include, including all the self-reported data that's out there? I honestly, um, was that Maria who said that? Or Sorry, Susan? no, that was Susan. This is Susan. This is Susan. Oh, Susan. I couldn't see where it was. Um, the the box was coming up. Susan, I don't think it's. I honestly don't understand the technology because I'm not a technology person. It probably explain. Actually, there is a section when you go onto the website that explains exactly how they get the data, how it's updated, all of that. So you can see that um, there. Um, I just know it's it's. Uh, I mean, there's different, I mean, there's different systems out there to pull information about salaries. This is one that we've used um, over the last five years, I think, something like that. It, it um, looks like anybody on this call could get a free, like one free salary report. Yeah, it looks like do it. They'll, they'll do I, that. And so if you, we could test it, you know, again. 100%. Women. 100%. Yeah. And if you run into anything, let me know. I'll introduce you to people there. I also am happy to run a report if somebody needs it. Um, and like anyone from my team, I think Amanda on my team is on the call. Um, she's our research manager. She runs reports all the time. If there's anything we can do to help, um, yeah, just let me know. Because like I said, I mean, it. It is so well, and here when you know, just looking at this next slide, pay comparison and equity issues. Here's another reason it's so important for employers to know what is market rate. Um, I think what's really interesting about pay transparency is, you know, first of all, there were a lot of factors that um, kind of drove this movement towards pay transparency. Um, I really a lot of factors, you know, increased recognition of gender and racial wage disparities, um, movements such as the Me Too movement, um, Black Lives Matter. Um, there was a response to public and advocacy pressures. And several states at this point um, enacted laws promoting pay transparency to tackle wage inequality. I believe, I think we're somewhere around eight to 10 states where it's the law, um, they've rolled out pay transparency laws um, and, and it's affecting about a quarter of the American workforce. Um, however, despite legislative efforts, there's still a gap between laws and what's happening in workplace practices, right? Um, what we know is that pay secrecy uh, often leads to number one disparities, um, and this most often will uh, impact underrepresented groups. So, you know, also for businesses that don't embrace pay transparency, the bot, you know, just the way communication is managed these days, it will be uncovered and businesses may face legal challenges um, and 100% they will risk um, a damage of their reputation. You know, I just think with social media, it's really difficult to hide things. Um, but there's so many advantages of being open about salaries and compensation. I think it can help build a culture of trust and fairness in the workplace. It is key in fighting gaps and making sure that everyone feels valued. Uh, <clears throat> plus, the transparency also can shine a light and fix unintended pay biases. Because often what happens, and we know a lot about unconscious biases, we're not even realizing that there are issues going on. Um, for a business to embrace pay transparency, again, I would suggest bringing in an expert in compensation to do an audit of your pay structures. Um, I, or, uh, well, you know, I mean, honestly, that's what I would recommend is bringing in an expert in compensation. Um, I think it's, it's, it's that important. 
Okay, so this is probably why <laughs> most of you decided uh, to, to except for Doris runs and Susan run an amazing meeting, but like what should we expect in 2024? I think it's pretty interesting from my perspective. There was a lot of like gloomy predictions in the beginning of 2023. Um, from a recruiting perspective, we remained busy the whole year. I'm curious to know from other recruiters um, in on the call, whether you're uh, a, a recruiting company or whether you do recruiting as part of your HR job. I, I'm curious to know what it was like at your company. Um, but it, you know, really, I mean, it was pretty stable throughout the entire year. So here are some of the points that Mallory Vashon, who is the chief economist at Labor IQ, some of the things that she said, um, so far forecasts for 2024 look a lot like the second half of 2023 when it comes to hiring. So we will continue to have job gains monthly, um, probably in the 100,000 to 200,000 range can, you know, it, to put that into context, the average in 2023 was about 225,000 per month. Um, and so we're not that far off from there. Um, the totals honestly are in line with what we would expect um, during a year of, of normal economic growth before the pandemic. So What's going on now is pretty much what it looked like before the pandemic. There will be an uptick in unemployment rates this year, um, <clears throat> but not a huge increase in unemployment. But what does that mean for employers? Um, it, it means that to find the talent you want, they may not be waiting out there, waiting to see a post, right? Or, you know, on Indeed or or on, on LinkedIn. A lot of the talent that you might be looking for they're working, they are, um, you know, they're passive candidates. And that's important to know when unemployment is low is that if you are recruiting passive candidates, there's gotta be a reason for them to wanna make a move. And it kind of goes back to fair compensation, um, benefits that make sense to people, an opportunity to develop um, and, you know, some form of flexibility. Um, we ended 2023 with wage growth uh, just over 4% and above actually where, where many projected. Um, now, this year, there will be slightly lower wage growth, not much lower, but it'll be less than 4% on average. Um, but it's important for employers to know that this 35 to 4% wage growth is what's going on in the market. Um, and they should realize that to remain competitive when it comes to compensation. You know, it, it, bottom line is businesses cannot ignore um, compensation, uh, mar you know, where the market is and certainly uh, wage growth. Um, and that means that compensation strategy is gonna become, continue, I should say, continue to be very important in 2024. Employers, and employees are going to be cautious. Employers are going to be cautious because they're going to want to make sure they're getting the right person. They're not spending too much, but they're actually offering fair compensation. Um, the, all, the rapid growth uh, that was happening, you know, 2021, 2022, that, like I said, is kind of evening off a bit. Um, and to find really, really good people, embracing benefits, embracing embracing total rewards, um, that is going to be hugely important. So I'm going to, um, our director of recruiting, Nicole Stasek, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, I asked her, you know, to, to, to weigh in on some of this. And one of the things she said is when unemployment is low and you're going to want to find someone and if they're working, most candidates want about a 10% increase to change positions. Now, people will make a lateral move. So small companies who aren't there in terms of comp, they'll make a lateral move. But again, that's where benefits come in. That's where flexibility comes in. 
Um, 100% remote, remote opportunities are still coveted in many situations. Although many employers say, I think it's better for our company for people to come in the office. So again, it's, it's a balance. Um, if employers don't cover 100% of medical benefits, people are going to want to be compensated from a salary perspective. You know, sometimes what I noticed, um, it's so interesting because candidates are doing their research, right? And they know what a role should be paying in any given market. Um, director and above positions, they expect a bonus. Um, some managers also, to be honest, um, bonuses are, are typically 10 to 20%. If you're looking at the vice president level, C-level, often they are expecting equity. Um, what, another thing we notice when we're talking to potential candidates is they're very open about sharing what other opportunities they are interviewing for and what they're being offered in terms of salary. Um, if you're skeptical, again, double down on doing the market research. Um, but candidates also, and back to pay transparency, candidates also, they want to know up front, okay, you know, what is the salary? Um, <clears throat> the remote work trend, like I said, which was accelerated the pan by the pandemic, it's going to continue to influence compensation. What I think is super interesting, and I'm curious from people who work at companies that are in various locations, companies might start, or maybe they've already started to adopt a more nuanced approach to geographic pay. Um, you know, balancing the need to attract in high cost areas, right, with the cost savings of a remote employee. So we have um, a client in New York. Um, they are a mostly remote company. They said, look, we need you to recruit this senior level finance position. Do not look at people in New York. Do not look at people in California, right? Do not look at people in Chicago because they wanted to balance what was going on in compensation and find some great talent in areas where, you know, comp wasn't so high. Um, Non-traditional benefits. Um, we've talked about as work-life balance becomes a higher priority, I actually think, you know, really it's been a high priority for many employees. Companies will continue to offer non-traditional benefits. Um, and so I think it's important to have those converse conversations with leadership. It's important to have conversations with um, your benefits um your, your brokers, your experts, Darice. <laughs> um, it's important to, to be able to talk about, okay, what makes sense for our size company with our budget and what else can we be doing? Um, wellness programs, mental health support. Um, if, you know, honestly, I would be curious um, <clears throat> if, so if my entire presentation wasn't up like this, I would be curious if, you know, to hear like, of the companies that you're working for, um, I should have prepared a poll. That would have been good. Next time I'll prepare a poll. <laughs> um, it would be really interesting to, to see, okay, what companies are are doing wellness programs? What? How many companies are, are doing mental health? How about extended parent leave? Um, all of these benefits that aren't as common, what are companies uh, really leaning into? Um, so, and then the technology and compensation management, that is referring to, um, again, right back to knowing what's going on in the market and using salary data to be able to make compensation decisions in, in your organization. Um, so uh, for the first time, this is a little bit different for risk results, but we're really excited about it. Um, but I'm definitely looking for feedback. We put out a white paper, um, how strategic recruiting can skyrocket your business success. And we talk about, um, you know, recruiting in a market where unemployment is, you know, below 4%. And, and you know, what does that mean? How can we find great talent? And what does that mean in terms of compensation? If anyone uh, downloads it, and if this doesn't work, um, please uh, email me. Um, 
uh, Jolene Rich at richresults.com. Just email me so that I can just send you a copy. And I'd love to know what you think. Again, it's the first time we've put out a white paper um, and uh, we worked really hard on it, but it won't be the last time. And so I'm definitely looking for feedback so that we can continue to give organizations the kind of resources they need to, um, to bring in great talent. And that's all I have. Um, I know this uh, meeting ends in about eight minutes. Um, Doris, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Um, and I'm gonna- Awesome. Stop. Yes, thank okay. you, thank you. I was trying to get your email address and put it in the chat. One you second. Do that? I can do that. Are there any now, questions that um, yeah. came up? And also if we don't get to them, please email me and let's find a, a time to, 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 to talk. Absolutely. Well, we have had some of our other, there was some like legal HR questions that were being asked in the chat. Oh, so Susan addressed them. So okay, for Susan. example, I need you, yeah. Susan. <laughs> yeah, she, she handled that. Like, for example, someone was saying, hey, you know, is there, how do we delicately say we don't want people out of California or Chicago, right? Without, yeah, you should hear what all of that legal us. stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, these are our clients telling okay. us that, right? And so, yeah you know, really what it comes down to is here's what we can afford and we can look all over the country, but um, we need to be able to afford it. So again, back to those salary reports, where can right. we look so that we can get the best talent? Exactly. And being strategic, right? right? That's just like strategy. Were there any yeah. other questions in the chat or Susan, you're trying to say something? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I could... No, and everybody can come off camera and do their camera now. Yeah. Um, no, that's sort of one of the helpful things. Ultimately, you as the employer are responsible. You are responsible for ensuring that your candidates' civil rights aren't violated. But it does give you a little bit of insulation when you use a staffing agency or fractional support because they are they are doing things and asking questions as someone who does not work directly for you. And they are, yeah, it's, you're still ultimately responsible, I guess, is the bottom line. So you don't want to tell your headhunter, hey, headhunter, make sure that nobody applying for my job has a bunch of kids. Like, oh, you wouldn't yeah. want to do that. Um, I I actually totally people do. They do. I have a list of questions. Um, we have a how to interview little presentation because candidate experience is so important. When we bring in talent, uh, potential candidates to a company, um, we want our clients, the companies, to be able to choose who they want, right? And if they have, if a candidate has a great experience you know, there's a better chance the company is going to be able to make that decision. And, and I actually have a list of, okay, I want to ask this question. Um, what should I, what can I ask in, instead? But again, I'm talking yeah. about yeah. experts, so I'm sure you know. Much <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you all. If we don't have any other questions, I'll go ahead and we'll go towards the ending of our meeting. I want to say thank you again, Jolene. She has thank said you. that she's not an HR expert, but she is a recruiting expert, okay? <laughs> so when you think recruiting, please think rich results. Small businesses, large businesses, she has the team and the expertise and a whole different approach of getting the candidates that you guys want. Um, please take her up. She says she's offering the uh, uh, the labor IQ report for you. If you don't, if you're not going to go and take advantage of that, and please download the. Uh, hope you got a picture of the QR code to get the recruiting strategy white paper that I am sure is awesome. Yeah, so just with that, email me if there's anything I can yeah. do to help, and I'm going to send out the information to you, Doris, about. Um, the yes. labor IQ, uh, the chief economist who's talking next Tuesday. She's Perfect. amazing. She's incredible. Perfect. I am going to send that out definitely. Susan, you want to go ahead and um, close us out with the, the final uh, remarks? Yes. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to maybe start doing something a little different that they do at the Fort Worth HR meetings that I like, which is just to say, 
one, are any HR professionals here uh, in transition looking for an opportunity who would like to um, say a little bit about themselves? And then the second one would be, is anyone hiring for anything that they would like um, that they would like support with? So feel free to raise your hand in the chat or give you a good solid 15 seconds here in case there's someone who's in transition. Right. Or if you have a friend who is in transition who you want to tell us about. I just feel like it's a good opportunity, you know? That's a networking. I think that's a benefit of networking with HR people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so getting getting a job oh, and filling a job. Hand. I see a hand. I am looking for an intern. Well, it's a paid internship for the summer. Uh, normally, I have budgets to get someone in from um, March all the way to August. So any um, new to HR, HR coordinator to mainly help with recruiting and um, new hire orientation. That will be something that I will need. You're looking and I can for always an send intern? a job description. If yes. you're looking for an intern, that one of the interns who worked for us um, uh, for, I think, like a year, um, she is amazing. And uh, can you email me and I'll introduce you guys? Yeah, sure. I can do that. I think I just she, connected with you. She's going to the University of Arlington right now. Actually, Doris. Oh, um, go Mavericks. I went there. Sachs program. Wow. wow. There you go. Okay. Thank I you. Love it. Yeah, I love it. She's so great. Awesome. I see that Lynn, Lynn is hiring an accounts receivable specialist and co uh, collection. So check the chat, y'all. I do want to respect your time. We got two minutes and we have to take our selfie. If you're new to this here, you have to, we do our selfie, right, Megan? So that we can post it on, uh, we can um, tease everybody on LinkedIn that didn't make time to join us, right? <laughs> um. Is like the it, trend it, of everyone like adjusting right now? It makes me exactly right. <laughs> yeah. I get ready to act silly or whatever your thing is, <laughs> so we can get you on. I do want to say really, really, really quickly: next uh, month, third Wednesday of the month, same time, noon, we are going to talk about a very special, uh, unique uh, benefit. Very special. Um, as Jolene was talking uh, about, being presented by. Um, Nicolette Barrett, she's also a 10K SP graduate. Uh, can I get my screen going? Yes, there you go. And she's gonna, she's the, she's gonna talk about outplacement services as an employee benefit. Mm -hmm. How about that? Huh. You're gonna learn about what the outplacement services can include, how they actually work, and the benefit of having it in your HR benefits package. So you might be thinking like, what? But that's why you need to join us so you can learn from learn the real deal. Nicolette's okay. success. Now I'm trying to get back to y'all. I don't lost y'all. Where are y'all at? Okay, here y'all are. So we can do um, do our big old selfie if I can get it right. Okay, I messed up my screen. Susan, you might have to do it. Okay. Okay. Can you okay? Uh, so okay, so for the no, for the selfie. Oh, this is hard. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do a, I guess a snippet. Is that, yeah, or is there the a way to? I'll do the snippet. All right. Um, all right, everybody on the count of three, say human resources. <laughs> One, two, three. Human <laughs> resources. <laughs> I think that went well. Yeah. Got it. Our and you, guys, you guys are adorable. Exactly. Oh if you Give haven't me. dropped your LinkedIn profile in the chat, go ahead and do that real quick because we're about to shut it down. But we will share our networking list for those of you that want that uh, volunteer and let us share your information. And with that, I will give you, nice we will you give you your Wednesday back. Thank you, Jolene, so much. Thank you all for joining us. Same. Channel. Thank you so much. Same time next month, third Wednesday, noon central.
Nicolette Barrett will be our speaker next month. I can't wait. I love Nicolette. Susan Darishell are the best. Bye, you guys. Oh, thank you, Megan. <laughs> bye bye, y'all.